Hello, English learners, and welcome back to another episode of English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today, with Erica, we are getting married. Well, we're not getting married. <laughs> We're not, but our actors in the podcast are. That's right. So we've got a lesson today about weddings. And you know what? A lot of the language in this lesson is about weddings and marriages. And maybe you don't need to use this language every day. But learning this vocabulary will definitely help you understand or learn a lot more about Anglo culture. Okay, great point, Marco. I think now we can look at our vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. So, two simple words in this vocabulary preview. The first one is groom. 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 So, who is the groom? Is the man, the man that's getting married. Okay, and our second word is bride. 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 And obviously, the bride is. The woman getting married. Perfect. Now we have our bride and our groom, so it's time to listen to our dialogue the first time. I can't believe that Anthony is finally getting married. Yeah, well, it's about time. He's been living with his parents for 40 years. Don't be mean. Look, here come the bridesmaids. Oh, their dresses look beautiful. Who are those kids walking down the aisle? That's the flower girl and the ring bearer. I'm pretty sure that they're the groom's niece and nephew. Oh, they look so cute. I just hope the priest makes it quick. I'm starving. I hope the food's good at the reception. That's all you ever think about food. Oh, oh I think the bride's coming now. Oh, she looks gorgeous. Wait, what's she doing? Where is she going? So、oh, great. Does this mean that the reception is canceled? Oh, Marco, that's so sad. Yeah, I know. The reception is canceled. Marco, <laughs> they're not getting married. Oh, well, I mean, the best part is when you go and eat and drink at the reception. Okay. <laughs> well, there's some great language in this dialogue. And now let's look at our language takeaway. Language takeaway. Great. Our first word on the language takeaway today is it's about time. It's about time. It's about time. It's about time. So now we are going to listen to some examples on how we use this great phrase. Example one Dinner's ready. It's about time. I'm starving. Example two. Guess what? I finally got a job. It's about time. You've been unemployed for two years. Example three. We're almost there. Just a couple more minutes. It's about time. We've been driving for 12 hours. So this phrase means. Finally. Finally. At last. We've been waiting a long time for this. Exactly. Okay, so it's about time. Great. Let's take a look at our second word now. Isle. Isle. A I S L E. Isle. Isle. It's a tricky word. It sounds like the contraction of I will. Yeah, but it's spelled so strangely. Right. We don't pronounce the S. The S is silent. That's、it's、true. Aisle. So, what is an aisle? In a big room where you have a lot of chairs, that space in the middle that allows people to walk through, that's the aisle. So, the aisle is the part where you walk. Yes. In a big room. In a big room. With、the、many chairs. With many chairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, in the church, the bride and groom. Walk down the aisle. Exactly.、Great. Let's move to our third word bridesmaid. 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 So, who are the bridesmaids? Or wait, maybe you should ask me that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, we don't get <laughs> bridesmaids. Okay, so the bridesmaids are the women who are friends of the bride who stand next to her when she's getting married. Usually they're her best friends. Right, okay. Okay, so we have our bridesmaids. Now we have our 
Flower girl. Flower girl. Flower girl. Again, I'll explain this please, one. Please, please. The flower girl is that cute little girl who walks down the aisle and who throws flowers. That's the flower girl. And with the flower girl, we have our ring bearer. Ring bearer. Ring bearer. So the ring bearer is the cute little boy who walks down the aisle carrying the rings. Yep. Okay, so a lot of useful vocabulary for a wedding ceremony. That's true. Now let's look at our last word gorgeous. 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 Gorgeous means beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. It, you know, beautiful you can only use with a woman.、Mm -hmm. Can you use gorgeous with a woman or with a man? Yes, gorgeous is unisex. So both men and women are gorgeous. Right, you can say, oh, that girl is gorgeous. That guy is gorgeous. Right? Or you can say, even this house is gorgeous. Okay, so men, women, objects. Yes, yes. All right, well, we've learned some really interesting vocabulary that will help us to understand an Anglo wedding. So why don't we listen to the dialogue slowed down? I can't believe that Anthony is finally getting married. Yeah, well, it's about time. He's been living with his parents for 40 years. Don't be mean. Look, here come the bridesmaids. Their dresses look beautiful. Who are those kids walking down the aisle? That's the flower girl and the ring bearer. I'm pretty sure they're the groom's niece and nephew. Oh, they look so cute. I just hope the priest makes it quick. I'm starving. I hope the food's good at the reception. That's all you ever think about food. Oh, I think the bride's coming now. She looks gorgeous. Wait, what's she doing? Where's she going? Oh, great. Does this mean that the reception is canceled? Now, in this dialogue, we have a word that many students often make mistakes on. So, this is a word that causes a lot of problems. Yes, the word marry. Marry. Marry, right? So, we are going to listen now to some common mistakes on how English learners use this word. Right, so these are wrong examples. Example one Honey, let's marry. Example two We married four years ago. Example three When I marry, I want a huge wedding. These are great examples of mistakes students make with the word marry. They're missing a word. Let's listen to these right examples to see what word is missing. Example one Honey, let's get married. Example two We got married four years ago. Example three When I get married, I want a huge wedding. Great. So we can see that when we use the word marry, we say to get married. Exactly right. Get married. To get married, right? Okay, don't forget that. Yes. Get married. I will get married. We got married. Right. So now you know exactly how to use this word. We are ready to listen to our dialogue again for a third time. And this time it's gonna be at a normal speed. I can't believe that Anthony is finally getting married. Yeah, well, it's about time. He's been living with his parents for 40 years. Don't be mean. Look, here come the bridesmaids. Oh, their dresses look beautiful. Who are those kids walking down the aisle? That's the flower girl and the ring bearer. I'm pretty sure that they're the groom's niece and nephew. Oh, they look so cute. I just hope the priest makes it quick. I'm starving. I hope the food's good at the reception. That's all you ever think about food.、Oh. 
Oh, I think the bride's coming now. Oh, she looks gorgeous. Wait, what's she doing? Where is she going? So oh, great. Does this mean the reception is canceled? Okay, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know too much about marriages because, first of all, I'm not married. And I've never really been to many marriages. So, Erica, some questions for you. Okay. What are these bridesmaids do? I mean, what are they what are they about? What do the bridesmaids do? Yeah, what are they what are they doing there? Well, like I said earlier, the bridesmaids are the friends of the bride. But the most important people besides the bride and groom are the best man and the maid of honor. Okay, and what do they do there in the ceremony? Well, what they do is they sign the marriage license. Okay. So they're like witnesses. Exactly. Okay. So, but wait a minute. They sign the marriage license there in the church? Yeah, of course. Right inside the church, you sign the marriage license. Wow, that's strange. Because from what I know, in other countries, usually you will sign the marriage license before the ceremony. So you get married twice. Yeah, you have like the civil marriage and then you have like the church wedding or whatever. That's so complicated. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the church wedding is just a ceremony. It's not really anything official. Oh, in Canada, it's the official part as well. I guess maybe you're just more efficient. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a really fascinating, a really interesting subject, isn't it? Yeah, because there's so many countries that have different marriage ceremonies. I know that marriages in India last around seven days. Yeah, yeah. I want to know more about how our users get married in their country. Yeah, so please go to our website at EnglishPod.com and tell us how you get married in your countries. Yeah, I can't wait to hear your stories. Yeah, it should be interesting, right? Okay, well, everyone, thanks for listening. And until next time, goodbye. Bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. Joined in marriage. Married. Finally. It's about time. Female friends or relatives who help the bride at a wedding. Bridesmaid. A passage between sections of seats. Aisle. A girl at a wedding that throws flower petals down the aisle. Flower girl. A boy at a wedding who holds the wedding rings. Ring bearer. Party held to celebrate something or to welcome people. Reception. A man who is about to be married. Groom. Female who is about to get married. Bride. Very beautiful or attractive. Gorgeous. Let's try that faster. A girl at a wedding that throws flower petals down the aisle. Flower girl. Female who is about to get married. Bride. Joined in marriage. Married. A man who is about to be married. Groom. Joined in marriage. Married. Very beautiful or attractive. Gorgeous. Female who is about to get married. Bride. Party held to celebrate something or to welcome people. Reception. A girl at a wedding that throws flower petals down the aisle. Flower girl. Finally. It's about time. A passage between sections of seats. Aisle. Finally. It's about time. A passage between sections of seats. Aisle. A man who is about to be married. Groom. Joined in marriage. Married. A passage between sections of seats. Aisle. Female friends or relatives who help the bride at a wedding. Bridesmaid. 
A boy at a wedding who holds the wedding rings. Ring bearer. Very beautiful or attractive. Gorgeous. Female friends or relatives who help the bride at a wedding. Bridesmaid. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Married. When did you get married? Isle. Please do not put your luggage in the aisle. Bridesmaid. I'm going to be a bridesmaid in my friend's wedding. Reception. Your wedding reception was beautiful. Gorgeous. It's a gorgeous day today, isn't it? Isle. Please do not put your luggage in the aisle. Gorgeous. It's a gorgeous day today, isn't it? Hello, everyone, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. My name is Catherine, and welcome, everyone. Today, we've got an elementary level lesson for you. It's all about sending things through the mail. That's right. So maybe gifts, maybe letters. We're going to the post office. So why don't we jump right into this dialogue? Let's listen to it for the first time, and we'll be right back. Hi, I would like to send this package to China and these postcards as well. Very well. You will need some stamps for the postcards, and I need to weigh that package too. Great. How much is this going to cost? Well, it depends. Do you want to send it via priority, express, or standard mail? What's the difference? Well, standard mail can take up to 15 working days. Priority is a bit faster and will arrive in about five to eight working days. Express is the fastest, but it's also the most expensive. It only takes three days, and you can track your package online. I see. Well, there's no rush. Please send it via priority mail. Please be extra careful. The contents of the package are fragile. All right. So pretty simple dialogue. We want to send a package through the mail. So why don't we take a look at some of those mail-related terms in language takeaway? Language takeaway. All right. So the first item we're going to talk about in today's language takeaway is something you can send. It's called a postcard. A postcard. Okay. So very popular among people who are traveling and they want to send a postcard back home. That's right. So a postcard is something that you usually buy at a tourist destination, like. Walt Disney World, for example, and it has a picture on the front and some words on the back, so you can write a letter on the back of this picture. Uh huh. So it's very simple. It's a.、Uh, it's not really a letter. You don't put it in an envelope.、Mm -hmm. You just、uh, write whatever you want on the back of the postcard. But you do have to put a stamp on it to, in order to send it. That's right. So stamp is our next word. A stamp comes in different price ranges. That means that some stamps are more expensive than other stamps. This is like money for the mail.、Mm -hmm. So you have to buy the stamps, and in order to prove that you have. Paid for the letter that you want to send, you must place the stamps on the letter, on the envelope, or on the postcard, right? So depending on the size and weight, it costs more. That's right. And usually, you lick a stamp to place it on the card so it doesn't fall off. True. That's right. You got to lick it.、Mm. All right. So as we talked about, a package can be a letter, a postcard. You place stamps on it, and we need to weigh the package to know how much money we have to pay. That's right. So sometimes a package is very heavy if it's filled with books, for example. Sometimes it's very light if it's filled with clothes or feathers.、Mm -hmm. And so to find out how much something weighs, we have to weigh it. This is a verb. Okay. So this is a verb, right? To weigh. So you want to know how many kilos or how many pounds this item has. Right. So we could say it weighs a lot, or How much do you weigh? Okay. Things like this. Very good. 
All right, moving on. We have the different types of mailing speeds, I guess, right? So we saw three mm -hmm. via priority mail, express mail, or standard mail. So let's go in parts. Let's go with the first one via priority mail. Priority is fast. It means priority is something that's important. So I have many priorities at work. Mm -hmm. This means they're important. Very important. So this letter has a certain importance. It's a little bit more important than, for example, the other letters. That's right. But express is the most important, the fastest. So to something that's express is fast, like an expressway is the fast highway. Mm -hmm. Express mail. Okay, so express mail is the fastest. And now the normal cheapest mail is standard mail. Standard. So the word standard usually means the average or the normal mm -hmm. mail. And in this case, it usually takes the longest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So obviously, standard mail is the cheapest. Express mail is the most expensive because it's the fastest. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we've got all of those speeds now. Let's listen again to today's dialogue and try and listen for the words we just talked about. And we'll be back in a moment to talk about some important phrases. Hi, I would like to send this package to China and these postcards as well. Very well. You will need some stamps for the postcards, and I need to weigh that package too. Great. How much is this going to cost? Well, it depends. Do you want to send it via priority, express, or standard mail? What's the difference? Well, standard mail can take up to 15 working days. Priority is a bit faster and will arrive in about five to eight working days. Express is the fastest, but it's also the most expensive. It only takes three days, and you can track your package online. I see. Well, there's no rush. Please send it via priority mail. Please be extra careful. The contents of the package are fragile. All right, we're back. So now let's take a look at three key phrases on Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right, so the first phrase today is one that I like to use a lot. We say, it depends. Okay, how much is this going to cost? Well, It depends. Okay, so the phrase could be "it depends." Mm -hmm. So it depends. When do you usually use this? Okay, if you ask me a question, I can have one answer, but maybe there's another possible answer. For okay. example, um, what are you going to wear tomorrow, Marco? Uh, it depends if it rains or not. Okay, it depends. If it rains, I will wear a raincoat. Mm -hmm. If it's sunny, I will wear. A normal coat. Mm -hmm. So it depends means there is a situation or a circumstance that might change, and if it does, my answer will change. Right. So it is a conditional. It depends. For example, I can ask you, "What are you going to eat tonight?" It depends. If I exercise, I'm going to have a hamburger, mm -hmm. and if I don't exercise, I'll have a salad. Nice. Okay.、Mm -hmm. So it depends. Now we have another phrase. When they were talking about how long it's going to take to mail something, he said standard mail can take up to 15 working days. So we have this little phrase there, up to. Up to. So up to. When you hear this, these two words together, that's an indication. It's a sign that we're talking about the maximum, the, the maximum. most.、Mm -hmm. Okay. So tomorrow, the temperature might go up to. 24 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the temperature maximum will reach 24. It could be maybe 22, 21, but not 25. Not 25. No, because up to means the top. So you're usually dealing with numbers, right? For example, this coat can cost up to $150. Wow! So the most I will spend is $150.、Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have a, a number like this when we're talking about sending a package.、Mm -hmm. We can send packages that weigh. Up to ten kilos,、mm -hmm. not more than ten kilos, though. Okay,、mm -hmm. very good. And now for our last phrase to close off the dialogue, the guy said, "Well, you know what? There's no rush. No rush. There's no rush." Okay. Well, the first word we want to look at here is the word "rush."、Mm -hmm. In this case, we're talking about sending a package and、mm -hmm. the postcard, right? So,、um, does this person want it to arrive fast? He says, "No." no. No, there's no rush. Let's send it standard. It's cheaper. <laughs> okay, so maybe, so maybe your friend is like, "Come on, we're going to be late." And you're like, "No, there's no rush.、We're、there's no rush. An hour. We have one hour before the movie starts. Calm down." Okay, so you're not in a hurry. No, there's no rush. 
slow down. It's okay. <laughs> this is a good one to talk about with friends if you're or if you're working on a project at mm-hmm. work. You say, "Listen, there's no rush. Take your time." Okay. Very good. So, let's go back to our dialogue. Let's listen to it for the very last time, and we'll be back in a bit. Hi, I would like to send this package to China and these postcards as well. Very well. You will need some stamps for the postcards and I need to weigh that package too. Great. How much is this going to cost? Well, it depends. Do you want to send it via priority, express, or standard mail? What's the difference? Well, standard mail can take up to 15 working days. Priority is a bit faster and will arrive in about 5 to 8 working days. Express is the fastest, but it's also the most expensive. It only takes 3 days and you can track your package online. I see. Well, there's no rush. Please send it via priority mail. Please be extra careful. The contents of the package are fragile. All right, we're back. So now, uh, Catherine, do you usually send postcards when you are abroad, when you travel? Yes, I love postcards. And actually, I have some friends who have an amazing postcard collection. Oh, really? But it's not normal postcards. No, what type They of find the most ugly postcards and wow. they buy them wow. and they write silly notes and they send them to themselves. Oh, really? Mhm. I have the tradition of always sending my parents and my grandparents a postcard when I'm abroad. That's so sweet. Yeah. So always. they have a collection of all of the places you've yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. So all the time wherever I am, the first thing uh, that I try to do if I'm in a cool place, I send them a postcard and Sometimes if I'm in a country in various cities and there's some nice things in for example two or three cities, I'll send them three postcards. That's awesome. So, do they have a book at home with all of these postcards? Yeah, they do. So, um, I you know, I just send them a little thing, how I'm doing and how great it is and wish you could be <laughs> here, you know, little notes and then um, they have all the collection. It's really cool because that way I've actually kept track a little bit of what year and what date I was in certain places. Oh, wow. Well, it's also nice because postcards you don't need to write a very long mm-hmm. note. There's no space. You just write a short note. You say hi, how's the weather? Miss you. Wish you were here. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's all the time we have for today, but let us know if you've had any inconveniences at the post office. I actually had one once. I couldn't send batteries through the mail because really? they have acid apparently. Oh yeah. So it's very difficult Alkaline. to send. Them. Mm-hmm. So uh maybe you've had a situation like this before let us know englishpod.com we'll see you guys there bye everyone bye